Coming out on this warm Sunday in the midst of 4th of July. My friends, Jesus is always with us. What's our main core value? Love God, receive God's love, and love all people in creation, no exceptions. I'll ask you every week, eventually we'll get it. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us share that peace. Okay, peace be with you. Peace. Peace, peace, peace be with you. you. Good to see you. Thank you.
Lord, you know the, the prayers of our hearts for healing, for our brothers, or our sisters, for those we do not even know. I remember my friend Rennie, who has stage four cancer. Oh Lord, we know you are about reconciliation, about restoration, about healing that your love is about bringing all things into good relationship. And so we lift them all up, trusting in your power to reach out to all of us and all of your people in this world. Open our hearts, O oh Lord, to those who we do not even know who suffer, who experience privations of governmental action, of war, of hatred and all sorts of injustices that we perpetrate, often with fancy sounding names. Bring your healing into this world and help all of us to pick up the hammer, to ring the bell, to sing the song of freedom and justice and love, that your love might take over that waves of love might cross the globe. We pray for the environment, Lord, which we are destroying. Guide us to be more open to healing that environment with your grace. All this we lift up in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen.
Sin is just trying to do life without God. Taking over and running on our own. And God's already forgiven us. Let's bring all that stuff that seems to be cluttering up our hearts and minds to God. Let the the love of God wash over us in Jesus' name. My friends, know that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you and forgives you and seeks to restore you to the full joy of his life. Amen. Let's pray. Prions le Seigneur. Eternal Dieu, nous élevons nos cœurs vers toi dans ce lieu saint. Ô oh, tendre Père, nous voulons que ton Esprit Saint nous assiste dans ces lieux. Souffle, Esprit de Dieu. Souffle, Esprit de Dieu. Ô oh, Seigneur, le Dieu miséricordieux, tu es la lumière qui jaillit dans les ténèbres. Nous voulons que tu nous assistes dans ces lieux. Tendre Père, recevez notre louange et adoration, car tu es digne de t'adorer, tu es digne de te louer, tu es digne de t'honorer, notre Père céleste. Nous prions pour ceux qui sont les malades dans les lieux, les hôpitaux. Nous prions pour ceux qui souffrent dans les prisons. Nous, sou- nous prions pour ceux qui sont dans les désastres. Ô oh Seigneur, conduis-nous. Nous voulons voir ton lieu saint. Nous voulons arriver dans ton royaume. Seigneur, écarte tout ce qui ne confesse pas ta seigneurie dans ces lieux. Que les faits dévora détruisent toute puissance impire et c'est là où nos puissance de Jésus-Christ. Viens au milieu de nous. Couvre-nous par ton sang, mon Dieu, mon roi. Bénis cette assemblée. Nous prions au nom de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Amen. Amen. My friends, 
if anyone is detected in transgression, you who have received the spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share it in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let, it, let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord.
And so this day, the power of God working through the Holy Spirit, the power of love. Now, when I was young and more foolish than I am now, at least I think I was more foolish then than now, love, I remember preachers talking about love, 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 and I just, that's just so silly. And yet love is at the very heart of everything that holds us together. Love is at the very core of what makes us human, what connects us to one another, what connects us to creation. So this morning we are starting in on uh, the last chapter of Galatians. And Paul has some interesting words to share with us. And as I read them, I was reminded of Gandhi. And once Gandhi was approached, he had these long lines of people that would come to him for bits of wisdom and advice and to solve problems. And a mother arrived with her son, and she demanded that Gandhi instruct the boy to stop eating chocolates. Gandhi told him to come back next week. When they returned, he looked at the boy and said, stop eating chocolates. And this infuriated his mother. Why couldn't you have just done that last week, she said. And Gandhi responded that he had to give up chocolates himself first. The story offers a bit of instruction on how the Holy Spirit is invited to work within us instruction that we probably don't really want to receive. Many a Christian are happy to tell others what to do and what not to do, to get on high horses and claim that they have the moral high ground and that they are telling people what is correct. We're happy and almost gleeful to announce the sins of others while smugly proclaiming our own holiness. And often this just begins with how we regard, how we choose what we regard as good and bad, acceptable and unacceptable. Now, I don't have any complaints against the Knight of Columbus, but Mother Teresa on at least one occasion did. They wanted to honor her with a great big dinner in New York and present her with a gift. It would have been a major coup to get this near saint to come to their dinner. And so they were very eager. And three times, I think, she declined and and mentioned that they were spending huge amounts on themselves for this event. Eventually, they agreed to give her three times the cost of the dinner. And she came. She received the check. She said thank you and left without eating the expensive dinner. She simply would not accept help which required her to eat sumptuously when others had no food. Hers was a discipline of the self, a practice of living with full honesty and self-reflection which would not allow her to receive an honor tainted with self-indulgence. She did not criticize the night. She simply lived authentically the truth of the spirit. She disciplined herself to be attentive to the spirits nudging in her spirit, to hold nothing but the cross of Christ, the suffering of God to show love to humanity as the source of holy pride. I can find myself taking pride in a lot of things other than the cross of Christ, through which God and complete love of God. I can find myself criticizing other people for their behavior and attitudes. In fact, I would say that for many years I cultivated the spirit of criticism. But I'm not alone because I once had a woman tell me that her spiritual gift was criticism. (laughs) Interesting, and it's not listed in the Bible as one of those... uh, spiritual gifts. 
To make matters worse, you know, I could recite rules and laws and Bible verses to support my position. I could even enforce God's rules. I was the agent for God's justice, I thought. And when I wasn't pretending to be God, I would just be a jerk. I'm confident that you're not that kind of arrogant person. But I suppose we're all tempted on to get on that high horse of judgment now and again, to apply our judgments and behaviors to others and to subtly take pride in being righteous ourselves. And St. Paul, who is so often quoted when people do this, St. Paul, who is the one who seems to be quoted as the authority for putting down other people, the text of this letter to the Galatians should suggest that when we make him that kind of a person, we're off base. Instead of urging us to judge and force one another to comply with our perspectives on a godly life, he says we should restore a person in a spirit of gentleness. We should bear one another's burdens in this way to fulfill the law of Christ to love others as God has loved us ourselves, to bear one another's burdens, to love others, even those we think are wrong. This is the key that we, he says we must test our work. Then that work, rather than the neighbor's work, will be a cause for pride. We should look at ourselves first rather than at others to see if we are living with humility. Whether we are conforming to the spirit of love, our chief task, our chief task is to do this, to look at ourselves. And the word flesh in that text has nothing to do with this stuff. It has nothing to do with sex. It has to do with that part of us that is self-proclaiming. It's about self-righteousness. It's about that part of us that seems to justify anything we want to do because we want to do it. That's the problem. We don't adopt the posture of humility before God and before others. We don't choose to love them, but to love ourselves in our judgments of other people, to boast about being better than others when the invitation is to see in others the presence of Christ. I've been reading a lot about Gandhi lately. He had an expression that he used in the struggles, to do or to die. To live into the truth, which is love. Or to take the consequences that society would mete out for that, including death. He refused to hate those who were his enemies. He refused to place judgment even on those who objectively, we would say, were hurting others. This is what it means to see the cross as the sole source in which we boast. The place we look where God came and God chose to show us what love really looks like as we crucified Jesus he still loved us. Because the cross is not there to teach God what God, to change God's mind, but to change ours so that we will practice the love that God has for us. So when we're tempted to look at others as deficient or wrong or somehow less than us, St. Paul's words encourage us to reflect more upon ourselves than on others and our need for divine love and the invitation to simply love others with the same love that Christ has shown us on the cross. 
We do not need to criticize, to judge, and to blame, but to find ways to love that transform human relationships. And this, friends, is the blessing of the gospel. It's how the Spirit transforms us. Ingrid and I were talking yesterday about how we just don't like to change our minds, even when we're obviously wrong. Why would I change my mind? I've held that opinion for a long time. It's worked. I mean, you know, I'm still here. We change our minds. We stretch the amount of trust and faith in our own thinking as far as the elastic band will go and even further in order to believe things which are really hurtful and wrong. And it's exactly that kind of elasticity that God isn't really interested in us having. God's interest in us is that we would go, ah, today is a new moment in which God's Spirit is speaking to me and transforming this moment and revealing something new that requires me to change inwardly, to experience this newness of God. And so, my friends, Enjoy, enjoy that transformative experience of the Spirit. Live into the love that God has given us and called us to give back to God and to all others without exception. And we will, in doing so, make disciples of Jesus Christ and see the world transformed, not by our own wills, but by the love of God. Amen.
And now, friends, I invite your offering. I invite you to bring up those cards that you filled out. Why do we do this? To show joy in the Lord. Because our African sisters and brothers, this is a major part of their worship as they come forward to share their joy in the Lord and to make their offering. In fact, the, the second service today, they're having two offerings. They're so joyful in the Lord. So I invite you to get up and move and to sing as we come forward with our offering. Christ our Lord invites to his table everyone, not just the select few, but everyone who seeks to be connected to God and to be at peace with others. You're invited to this table. And after our prayers together, you're invited to come forward and stand or kneel and receive if you need gluten-free. It will be available on my left, your right. Just ask for that. Remember that Jesus promises to be present in this food for us. So look for him in your heart and experience his love. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give the sector to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is all right, a good, a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You spoke to us through the prophets who looked for the day when justice would roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time has come when you will save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, he ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you have given birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death, making with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave effects to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take it. This is my body, 
which is given for you, do this in your members of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave the thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from me with all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as, the, as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Who out your Holy Spirit on us gather here and on gift of bread and wine. Make them before us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may before the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we first at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The bread of heaven for the people of God. Amen. The cup of blessing that all may be blessed. Amen. The body and blood of Christ. All things are ready, you may come forward. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Given for you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Given for you. The body of Christ. The body of the body of the Christ, body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ given for you. 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 The body of Christ the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ 
que vem feia. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy ministry in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go and then Brothers and sisters, go forth filled with the Spirit of God. Love all. Love God and let the love of God fill you that through you Christ may be revealed in the world. Amen.